Yeah, and we're on. Introducing Avi Masinga, co-founder and CEO at Codem Security, a leading context-based application security platform. Musi, how are you, mate? Welcome to the show. I'm good. I'm good, Coops. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so oh, much. Pleasure's all mine, mate. Pleasure's all mine. So I uh, normally get a bit of a fun fact about my guests before we steam into the pods. And uh, yours was very easy because I was on your LinkedIn profile and saw that you were sort of performing with Green Day. <laughs> is that right yeah is that you yeah you know that's like the the like the childhood dream that came true uh right like in 2009 right almost like 15 years ago um <laughs> i was i was working for like a summer camp in in southern california and and was there with my friend it was the post army the post israeli army trip uh and I'm a huge fan of Green Day, right? And I saw that there's there's a concert in in a city called Sacramento, right? And in Israel, everything is closed. Like you go from one side to the other in like three hours driving, right? And and I bought the tickets and I told everyone, listen, like let's let's drive to Sacramento in one of the weekends. And then I understood that, like from Malibu to Sacramento, it's about seven eight hours driving, uh, right? I also told them that like it's going to happen, but I, like I have to get on stage. And then, you know, it just happened. Like, like the like main like like the lead singer Billy Joe like was asking like who knows how to play the guitar. I got lucky, and he, and he looked at me. He pulled me out like of the of the crowd, and and wow, incredible! What dreams yeah. are made of? Yeah, yeah, incredible. Yeah, I saw it, and I was just like, wow, what are the chances? <laughs> but anyway, um, look, that's a great icebreaker. Anyway, we'll see. But um, for those of uh, the, the the audience that that don't know who you are, with all my guests, I do like to just take it right back to where it all began, and sort of first of all, how you got into to the industry and security. Yeah, so I I guess that I'm like since childhood, since really like when I started learning English, I started also to code. And I got my first computer and started to do it like since really, I don't know, like fourth grade, uh, I, I guess. Um, and I was like, I just loved computers. I loved understanding how things work. I served in the Israeli intelligence. Um, and so also like what is, what nation state cyber actor looks like. Uh, studied engineering, studied computer science, um, and worked for various places until I reached, I think, like the places like where I got really the like the cyber experience and uh, the most of uh, which is the NSO group. Um, and in NSO, like I also met my co-founders. We spent almost a decade working together and building, I think, like the most sophisticated technology like back then that we could think about and solve difficult problems. Um, and this is what also gave us the glimpse into how sci how enterprise security looks like. And right, like we were on the other side of the fence, right? Like we saw what's, what doesn't work and how we can utilize that, right? How we can build something that can use those vulnerabilities and how can we bypass mitigations what things exist like what is wrong what is foundationally wrong with the process that the biggest enterprises in the world do application security and eventually this is what let us feel like the urge to like switch sides and see how we can solve those problems for the world because like what we've seen is that application security that just doesn't work it's too complicated it's messy it doesn't fit the modern and uh, development and and that was the pain that led us uh, mm -hmm. eventually to found codem yeah nice so you talk about like uh hard problems and very complex problems like look, obviously breaking into phones is like well i think the iphone's meant to be unbreakable right um <laughs> So when did the, the the vision come for Codem? Like, because obviously you knew your co-founders from previously. So when, when did the vision all come around? And then how did you get to a point where you were like, let's just do it, guys? So I it, it started with the team, 
that we were very close to each other. We mm -hmm. worked very well with each other. And the thing that drove us really like to wake up every morning, right, and meet each other was the fact that like today we're going to solve something that no one believes that we can, right? Like, uh, and, and this is what led us like to, to do it over and over again and try to outsmart. Uh, like people that wrote amazing code, right? And to try and find like problems there and think about how we can now handle something very comp like a hardware mitigation that Apple released like in their like in their phones or right like different things that happened. Um, and we knew that we want to work with each other. We knew that we want to do great things together. And I think that eventually we we believe that we can do something that can really revolutionize the world, like revolutionize the way that application security looks today, being able to mitigate uh, like new generation of attacks that we started to see more and more. And we decided that we can build something that will be both meaningful, impactful, and and really make a change. Like yeah. not build something that is like, you know, like two times better, but build something that is like thousand times better. And and this is what led us eventually yeah, to yeah. that it's time to do something else and and try to do it, uh, um, like with the head of the like entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. What? So, can you give us a bit more of a context, an idea of who Codem Security are and what you are up to now, and the problem you are solving? Yes, of course. So, we started right, like when we saw the pain and and the problems with the current toolings, we saw that what is missing is just a little bit of context into what, into how your application behaves, what components exist there, how they interact with each other, what is external facing, what is not. What do you use? How often do you use that? Right, like find all of those questions that today, if you ask any AppSec practitioner, like they would tell you that, like they are manually trying to find, like to 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 solve these questions, and and the biggest problem that exists today, because like all of those questions and context is something that is manually created, is that there's huge amount of alerts of problems from multiple sources and multiple tools, uh, problems that eventually an AppSec practitioner needs now to triage for developer, need to understand how to solve that. Um, and, 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 and it causes a lot of pain, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's an unfair battle that exists there. So we're trying to solve the unfairness and try to solve the the fact that it is a battle today between security and, and developers there are it seems like a ton of application security products out there like what what is so different about you guys because i see a lot of people talking about you on linkedin and like how great you are and what you are doing is so great and different like in your own words what what is so different about coding so when we when we started to build Codem, we knew that we want to build something from ground up that is like built to exist and built to last and built to provide huge value. We implemented everything from like our visibility stack, like how we see the thing from the bare metals, from like kernel level, all the way up to the application layer, giving us the ability to see everything like all the applicative stack. And the unique thing about how we do it is that we base it on runtime, base it on seeing the application actually actually mm -hmm. uh, being executed, right? And, and from seeing the application in runtime, there are many things that earlier on the development life cycle, you have to guess and it causes to like the false positives and noise and, and like friction and and so many things that you can like if you really connect the right to the and the left the runtime and the development uh, phase you can really understand what is meaningful what poses risk and you also understand how to solve that yeah and that's the unique thing about about our approach the the technology is not trivial it took us like really long time to be able and come out with something that uh, um, will be enterprise grade, production ready, everything that you can think about. And 
and this is why also we're getting so much uh, like like positive feedback from from customers and from partners and everyone sure i also spoke to your vp of marketing before we 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 sort of got on the show um and they've obviously recently joined and i asked sort of why why has he joined and uh one of the things he said was specifically how mind blown he was from the technology it comes to technology and i think this is something very unique for like three technical co-founders and the uh, and all the founding team are highly technical people um that we were able to attract because we came to solve a problem that is painful in a very noble way. It's not about building a nice dashboard, right? And connect to every tool we can and give you, you know, some insights. Um, but it's actually building a technology that can really last, can be very efficient uh, and, 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 and resilient and be able to provide this value that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So, we came with a big promise that we can do a lot, right? We were able to execute on that. And and now we are also able to, to attract incredible people, incredible people to the team that can help us scale it. And those people are attracted to the fact that we are here to solve something that is painful, solve it in a very noble way, solve it in a in a way that like no one was able to solve that before. Um and this is why yeah. nice. and this is why we are where we are yeah yeah love it man love it i'm i'm curious as well so we've obviously got s bombs specifically um so software bit of materials for people that don't know particularly with the new uh, presidential order that's coming in how's that going to drive sort of inbound interest into what you guys are doing so 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 we get a lot of inbounds um like because of that, and also like even even before that, because of FedRAMP uh, and companies mm -hmm. that are starting to work with federal uh, um, agencies and, and authorities, and and the thing is that right, and and I believe that we'll see that in other countries and other places that when you buy software and when you integrate software, you are now taking risk. Right, because maybe maybe someone on the other side used a vulnerable component. Maybe they wrote vulnerable code, and you want to know like what's the risk that you're taking, right? Like we're right. I just bought like security cameras to my house, right? Maybe someone else. Maybe the developers of these cameras used something vulnerable, and now you know like a, a malicious actor can can log into my cameras and see, right, and and wow. see everything that's going on in my house. Right, so we we want to be secure. When it comes to highly regulated um, organizations, they 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 have to verify that they are secured, right? And and they are required to provide their bill of materials, right? Which makes a lot of sense to them. And, and frankly, like I don't understand why it's not something that everyone needs to provide mm -hmm. with their software, right? Like provide a software bill of material. Like I want to see what you use, if it's vulnerable or not vulnerable. I want to know what risk I'm bringing inside my house when I'm buying your product, right? And it makes a lot of sense. But again, because AppSec is 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 a mess today, it creates also a lot of, of pressure now that security teams need to provide a clean report. And now there are so many alerts and those alerts are just like keep on piling up that it's impossible to do that. And now the business is seeing friction because there's a report that is not clean and and it takes yeah. a lot of time to solve those things. And and this is one of the things that right, like you need to understand what exactly poses risk or not, so you can be focused on how to solve those things. Mm. Who 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 are we referring to? Is this the security team that should whose problem is this? Like who should care? So right, like like be, it's the security team's problem, right? They need to deliver that. But eventually when it causes the friction to the business and when there's mm -hmm. now, let's say, a huge deal that cannot be closed unless you provide your bill of material report and this report is clean. And now the business has, right, let's say like millions of dollars that are waiting for a security report. Now it's the 
right? Like like the like the chief executive officer's problem. Mm -hmm. How is the board that is looking into this? Why 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 this deal is not closed? Yeah. Already? Yeah, yeah, nice. I saw you you posted an article about AppSec and coffee. Do you remember? This was a, yeah. a brilliant, a brilliant blog. I, I won't ask you to <laughs> like to, to 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 reel it off now, but I'll put it in the show notes. But what it was, it was just revealing about the evolution of application security specifically. So we mentioned SPOMs. Like, what else in in terms of the future of the space? Like, what what are you sort of expecting, and sort of which way do you think that you'll be taking Codem? So, the way that we look at application security in Codem is, and right, and we're not inventing anything anything new when it comes to right like the vision, but we're just seeing something incredible that happened with, let's say, like operating systems. Right in the past two decades, three decades, so many things that happened there that you can just bring to application security, bring to cloud security, right? Like we had operating systems that were very simple, and then right, like there was the internet, and you could just download something off the internet, right, and run it, like download games and apps, and then operating systems came with sandboxing and came with right like different way to isolate different things that you like just bring from the outside and code signatures and different things that if you look at the way that modern software application looks like the way that cloud architecture looks like it's just another version of what happened in operating system a decade ago so the way that we look at that and right our vision forward is to be able and not just help organizations solve problems as early as possible and you know like fix vulnerabilities but be able also to introduce mitigations that you can still be vulnerable right because vulnerabilities will always like there will always be vulnerabilities right even after like gen ai will write our code for us there will be vulnerabilities there and there will always be vulnerabilities but the ability to create a mitigation that now an attacker cannot exploit this vulnerability, this is something that doesn't exist yeah. today. And this is something that this is what Codem brings to the table. This is the 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 like our prophecy for how cloud security should look like mm -hmm. years from today. Um and this is how we build this product. Mm -hmm. Love it. You mentioned team a couple of times um, and how important your founding team was. And I know you, you've made some recent new like executive code to market hires in sales and marketing. Right. What, 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 when you're making your hire, like specifically, what sort of folks are you looking for? What is the Codem DNA, I guess, for anyone that's interested in potentially joining you guys? So I think that the most important thing is that we're looking for people that love to learn, right? Like learners that like their passion is about learning, is about growing, is about um, being able to listen and understand things that they haven't understood before, being able to learn new things, the willingness to build something that is incredible, right? And and do all of those things and, you know, like keep the keep the culture and be there for each other right and 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 this is what we're looking for like we're looking for people that really like their motivation is to wake up every morning and do something new right mm. like usually i tell like every executive that i hire and uh, one of the things that i like ask in 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 my interviews is that like four years from today right i would want you to write a book a book that we will sponsor right but I want you to write a book about like what you've done in the company and how different it is from anything you've done before. And 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 my question is if if you can like walk me through this book, like what's the title? Like what like what is it going to be about? Like what's so special about it? And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for people that look to disrupt even what they do, right? Like my yeah, head yeah. of marketing, I told him listen, like, I don't want you to do anything that someone already did before. Like, I don't care about the playbooks, about everything that, right, like, exists there today. I'm looking to do something completely different, something bold, something that 
will make people, you know, really be excited about that. And and this is also like like what we bring into the product and what we bring into our engineering and into our sales and how we treat customers, right? And how like what the relationship would bring with them. We try to create a startup in every aspect of the company. And then, right, like if we do everything right, then the company will just be love very it. successful and everything will be good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Love it. I think this ties it up quite nicely or at the end, to be honest, mate, because in four years time, what are you going to be writing about in your book? So I have a lot, like I want to write about like how to build, like how how to build a company, right? In Hebrew, in Hebrew, the world for um, company and society is the same, the same world, right? Like, like we say, Hevra, Hevra is both company and society. And I want to write a book about like how you can build both those things, right? And still, and, you know, and still be alive. Brilliant. I saw one one story I saw you posted on LinkedIn was how uh, I think you accidentally deleted someone's computer. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that will be one of the chapters in the book. We'll see. Yeah. First chapter, (laughs) don't do the things that you are not good at, really. This is it. Oh, yeah, man. When you start, like, you know, like I was the the IT guy, like ev- everyone is everything, uh, you know, and, and sometimes uh, sometimes mistakes happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all learning, as you say, brother. But listen, Mercy, all the best of luck with the future of Coder, man. Thank you so much, Coops. Really, really looking forward to speak again. Absolutely, mate. You're the man. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed today's show, please like and share with your friends and colleagues as this is really important for the show's reach. If you'd like to be our next guest or are interested in Aspon Search's staffing solutions, please get in touch directly with me or reach out to us via our website, www.asponsearch.com.